We have Rwandan and Ugandan firms calling for a zero rating of cement imports. This roughly a week after we saw Kenyan uh, cement manufacturers petition their government to actually oppose the call. Give us your take on what's actually playing out here. I think first I would like to clarify that the request for zero rating of uh, cement imports has not come from the cement firms in Uganda and in Rwanda. They have actually come from the Business Council. The uh, cement firms in both Uganda and in uh, Rwanda are strongly supporting the move that the duties, the common external tariffs should continue. Let's analyze this question from various perspectives. The first perspective is why are these two countries requesting for zero rated duty on cement imports. The first reason is capacity. Now in East Africa at the present moment, the, sim uh, the cement and clinker capacity, both put together is about six million tons. It is sufficient to meet the existing demand of all the East African countries. Over the next couple of years, the total capacity in East Africa is going to double we will have approximately 12 million tons of capacity in the region and that should be sufficient to meet the demand in the entire region. Mm -hmm. The second rationale for asking for this is probably a notion that if the duties are removed on cement then the prices of cement would fall. Now this notion is not entirely correct. What does it do? It only increasing the trading margins for the importers. It doesn't actually reduce the cement price there are several countries in Africa where the duties are zero on cement. A case to example is South Africa, where the duty on cement is zero, but the cement prices in South Africa are the same as in East Africa. So the cement prices in East Africa are not very high. They are in line with the uh, international G given prices. Given that that's the case, I mean, if this does come to the fore, just how cost competitive can Ati River mining be in this regard? I mean, what's your plan moving forward? Now, uh, in the manufacture of cement, 50% of the cost is energy cost. Mm -hmm. In East Africa, we do not have any, any energy resources like we have in South Africa. As far as the manufacturing process is concerned, today we are very, very competitive. The kilo calories per ton of cement produced is the same as any other part of the world. The electricity consumption is the same as any other part of the world. The only difference comes in the cost of fuel and the cost of electricity. The cost of electricity, for example, in Kenya is about five to six times the cost of electricity in Egypt. Now, this is a cost factor. It is not a competitive factor. We can ensure that we are competitive in our energy consumption. We can ensure that we are competitive in our electricity consumption. But the cost of these, the yeah. cost per unit of electricity and energy is determined by the local country factors. Surendra, we know that Ati River Mining is in the process of constructing its power plant. It's a move that's certainly been lauded uh, by market watchers, uh, as it can to a degree help with some of your operational costs. Uh, when it does come online, just how much uh, flexibility does it actually afford you, uh, afford you and how much pressure does it alleviate off your bottom line? Well, uh, in terms of when our uh, power plant comes in, our cost of uh, energy per unit would decrease by about 20%. Now, we must remember that we are putting up a power plant, but we will still be importing coal from various parts of the world because coal as a resource is not available in Kenya. So we would be able to reduce our cost by about 20%, the electricity cost by about 20%. We would be more competitive by about 20% but it would still be more expensive than, for example, Egypt or South Africa. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's leave it there. Surendra Bhatia, Deputy Managing Director at Ati River Mining, thanks so much for sharing your time with us this morning. Of course, that uh, just some of uh, uh, some of the news that's uh, dominating over in uh, the cement industry over in East Africa right now. Let's uh, turn our attention very quickly into the Kenyan market, specifically recapping as usual on trade as it played out on Friday last week. We had uh, the NAC 20 index gaining just over a percent to finish at uh, 3,031 points with turnover for the day coming in at just over 177 million shillings. And traders saying that we're coming off uh, 
uh, range lows and that the top of the range is about 10% higher. Taking a look at the currency picture in the meantime, Kenya's shilling barely moved against the dollar on Friday and dealers saying that they expect it to remain at current levels in the coming week. Uh, in addition to very thin trading volumes, the central bank, which has frequently bought dollars from the market to boost its reserves uh, since the second quarter of this year, stayed out of the market on Friday. So really very little pressure being exerted. We've got the local unit coming into today at 75 shillings, uh, 25 to the greenback, with traders predicting that the shilling will remain between 75 and 75.50 for the next week. Well, let's get into some market analysis right now. And joining us uh, from our studios once again in Nairobi is Ali Khan Sachu. He's the chief executive at uh, Rich Management. Ali Khan, good morning and thanks so much for joining good us. Good morning. Well, Thank you for having you've me. just heard this conversation we've had with Surendra mm. Bhatia of Ati River yes. Mining. Of course, it is a, a big contention point at the moment. What are you making of the news that's come to the fore? And how do you see things playing out uh, for the sector to be viable moving forward? Well, I, I, I'm not so sure that this is going to go through. And I think Arthur River Mining was a very interesting interview for you to have because they're, after all, scaling up quite, quite substantially into 2012, adding a lot of capacity in the region. And I think they, they, will, they would really prefer to have uh, a tariff in place whilst they do that because it makes their product much more competitive. You know, we, have a, we, we, we consume very little sh uh, uh, cement per capita. That is in a growth curve. And I do sense that really it is a growth market. You know, we'll get buffeted by these sort of political noises, but I don't think it's that material to, to ARM's business strategy. Well, Ati River Mining has certainly been very mm. clever in its strategy. I mean, mm. it first diversified into fertilizer production, but now, yes. as I was saying earlier, it's got plans to actually produce its own uh, power. So what's your view yeah. on Ati River Mining at the moment, and would you be buying? Yeah, I'm quite bullish. Out of all the cement stocks in Kenya, I think, you know, because of the low base effect, because of the sharp leveraging up in, in production that we're going to see, and because of the fact that Pradeep has a great deal of equity and is always cognizant of how to juice that equity, I think it looks a very interesting stock. It's behaving extremely well. It sits just below 100 resistance. There's strong demand and I think we'll break 100 going forward. He's got a very aggressive build-up in his EPS, and you know, one thing you cannot fault them on is execution. Mm -hmm. These boys are extreme, they're quite faultless when it comes to execution. And yet, Ali Khan, we've got uh, foreigners mm. very interested in Bamburi, very. I mean, Bamburi cement. I mean, they've been mopping up yes. shares on the counter there. It's been expected to hold steady at around 160 yep. shillings for the week. So how does Bamburi cement uh, compare here? And what's the investment merit that foreign investors seem to be seeing here? Well, I think with Bamburi, you've got Lafarge as a big shareholder. It's a, it's a much bigger company. A lot of foreign investors have capitalization threshold requirements, and Bamburi easily pops into those, into those uh, requirements. So I think that's what's attracting people. But in terms of risk-reward for an equity investor, it is ARM, which is much juicier mm -hmm. uh, in terms of its return profile. Bamburi a little bit less juicier, but extremely steady. It has low beta, it's got a good dividend, and I think that's what's attracting folk to it. Is East African Portland cement then the laggard in this sector? How are you viewing that? Well, I think there's still a little bit of confusion, Alicia, around the markup they did on the real estate side, which, which uh, produced a one-off and pretty substantial profit, which has brought this PE ratio down to, I think, about three and a half. They also have this issue with the Japanese yen uh, loan they've got, which has an outsized impact on the, on the results mm -hmm. every year. They're trying to knock that out with a convertible bond. I personally uh, 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 i am uncertain uh, as an analyst or as an investor as to the merits of that markup in the, in the accounts. And I would like a little bit more clarity on that before I was to sort of make a judgment on them.